There's a mystery that needs to be solved. Which is, how do we get hurricanes? Understanding that better, um, and really the mechanisms involved, I think will help the forecasts that, that, are, that are produced. I think we'll have a better understanding of, the, of what processes the computer models need to represent and how they need to represent them. In particular, with the, the thunderstorms and groups of thunderstorms, we need to know what distinguishes those from the, the common, I'll say garden variety, thunderstorms that occur elsewhere in the tropics that don't lead to a tropical cyclone. There's, there's definitely something different about these. The current state of hurricane prediction uh, is that the, the path of a storm is the most predictable attribute of a, of a tropical cyclone. And that's because the path is governed most of the time by larger scale motions in the atmosphere which have a much longer what we call predictability. The hard problem is the intensity of a disturbance, and intensity is very difficult for us to predict because it does involve small scales in the center of a storm. It's been particularly difficult to observe the earliest stages of hurricane development um, over, over the years, partly because they do take place so far from land. So. Um, the trick really is to get aircraft out there early enough that we can see the, the very beginnings of uh, circulation developing and distinguish uh, situations that lead to a storm versus those that don't. We will be co collaborating with NOAA and NASA during this project to the maximum extent possible. Um, we will be based in St. Croix and with the G5 our intent is to fly to disturbances at their very earliest stages of formation. Um, so typically, in the first third and the last third of the project, we'll be conducting one flight a day if there's a viable uh, disturbance. Our plan is to fly early morning, uh, take off somewhere around 5, maybe 6 a.m. local time. Uh, and most of the missions with the G5 will be somewhere around nine hours. We're going to be using a variety of instruments, uh, drop sons or deployed instrument packages that, that drop a variety of remote sensing equipment, uh, ice cloud physics uh, measurements and things like this. In addition to the drop sun instrument, we're going to be using something called the microwave temperature profiler, which actually produces uh, a, a vertical profile of temperature in front of the aircraft as it flies. So you sort of get this curtain if you like, that's several kilometers deep, a few kilometers below to a few kilometers above the plane of temperature. You know, there are probably many storms over the years for which a seven-day forecast would be useful, but Hurricane Felix stands out as a particularly difficult case. It wasn't anticipated to really become uh, a strong tropical cyclone, and it was even difficult at times to envision it was going to develop at all. And yet, uh, it went from a pre-depression to a category five in something like three days. And it, it did surprise a lot of people. And uh, of course, Hurricane Felix went on to make landfall a couple days later in Honduras and Belize. So if you take that total time scale of about five or six days, it's pretty clear that seven day forecasts have a role to play provided they can produce a credible forecast of uh, tropical cyclone formation. So that, that was a, definitely a case where a seven-day forecast would have been a uh, tremendous benefit.